Well, welcome back to Digging Deeper with Pastor Kyle, Pastor Nigel. We are into February and... That's crazy. We are moving through John. We have now passed through chapter 17 and we have gone through the upper room discourse. What? We have gone through that? the high priestly prayer. How long were they in that room? <laughs> so long. <laughs> so weeks and weeks ever, and man. weeks. Not exactly that, but it was a great, great time going through it. And so today we're going to focus in on John chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. Mm-hmm. You read through kind of 26, but you really kind of hit... Uh, 11 through 19. So that's where we're going to focus. So once again, where we are, this is the last night of Jesus's life. He's about to be betrayed. This all started out with him loving the disciples by washing their feet. Mm -hmm. And at the end, he's going to pray this prayer to the Father over them, over himself first, over them, and then even over us. ending. And we get something very important here at the end, verse 26. I made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. And so love is over all of this. And one of the things that really stood out this week was the four things that you had talked about yeah. that are right there in the text that he's going to pray over them. That they have unity, that they have joy, that the Father would protect them from the evil one, and that they would be sanctified in truth. So what we're going to talk about today is we're going to just hit briefly... Uh, unity, and we're going to hit briefly sanctify yep. them in truth, yep. but we're going to ho- hone in on joy and protection from the Father uh, against the evil one. But first, if you don't mind reading for us, mm-hmm. verse 11 through 19, and then we can yeah. roll in. All right, John 17, 11 through 19. Now, I've got my NIV Bible with me. so Dear gracious. I know it's the non-inspired version. That's what it stands for. <laughs> not really. That's not true. Not true. <laughs> But if you read along at home, you're like, oh, I grew up Kyle, with that's it. the wrong I grew one. up with it, and I agree. Yeah, that's the first that's Bible. That's what I grew I, up yeah. with. Yeah, it's still good. It's still good. So uh, John 17, starting 11. Uh, Jesus says, I will remain in the world no longer, but I'm still in the world, and I'm coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name that you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that the scriptures would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world even as I am not of it. And 17, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. And as you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that I too may be truly sanctified. So much there. So yeah, and then we read all the way through to the end, but, but and which kind of repeats back. It sort of cycles it hits, back. It, it hits a back lot of some the same of those stuff. things. Yeah, a lot of the same uh, stuff. Yeah, so we, we wanted to break it down into the four main things. By no means did we cover everything there is to cover <laughs> in any verse we've ever done, really. Um, but that's how we yep. had to break it down. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. All right, so let's briefly just talk about unity. Mm. We've been talking about that a lot lately. That's been something that yep. has been hitting a lot. We're going to keep doing it too. but We're yeah. going to keep talking about it. Um, unity is important. We've said uh, unity is spiritual warfare. That's what I always say. Yeah. That's what Kyle unity always says. spiritual warfare. And yeah. uh, it's it's the truth. It's so, so important. That's, that's what the fight is over, yeah. is over that. And so Jesus is going to make sure that he is praying for unity. It's, it stems from the triune God being united with each mm-hmm. other. And this hope then also of us being united with the triune God. And in the meantime then, we're called to be united with one another as yeah. a picture and as, a, as, as really a, an extension of the unity that God has with himself. It is, and it's a unity, it's a unity of purpose that comes from the unity of spirit. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's so many dimensions to it. The simple way, the kind of like practical way you look at it, if, if you're going to war and your forces aren't united with each other in purpose, <laughs> we're taking that hill, then you're not going to take that I'm hill. I'm taking that hill. <laughs> and I'm mad at you for taking that hill, and I'm going to argue with you while we're getting attacked about this hill. That doesn't go well. And so the enemy likes to, I mean, all he does is just turn us to each other, focus on the wrong thing. We, de- we debate and argue about a hill to take, 
when the spirit is over here going, I've told you what he'll take. You don't need to spend any time worrying about that. Let's do it. Yeah. I just had a call yesterday. Turn. Somebody not at this church, but it was all over unity. Mm. That's what it was about. There was all the other things. There was all the thousands of other things that were going on. But at the core of it was the attack was against unity. Mm -hmm. It was like, let's bring in all the stuff, make everybody upset, and it's going to attack the unity of the church. And it's like, ah, that, that's a big piece of it. Yeah, like we said on Sunday, it's, the, it's on page one of the enemy's playbook. Yeah. And, and, and oftentimes, if he can turn us against each other, which comes from, you know, focus on the wrong things, focus mm -hmm. on this. Mm -hmm. That he doesn't even have to turn to page two. He just goes, <laughs> sweet, moving on. Uh, it always works. It, always, it works. always works. It always works. So that's unity. It's spiritual warfare. I didn't actually say that. That was not you know, He uh, says it a lot. So I say it more than him now. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. All right, and then that's talk good. to us about sanctified in truth and what that is talking yeah, about. Yeah, so, so the, he ends with that being sanctified in truth. Sanctified being, means being set apart, mm -hmm. specifically in this case set apart for the the use of the master, the master's use. Yeah. Uh, and sanct to be sanctified also refers to the process of becoming more Christ-like, uh, less of us, more of him. Yeah. And that doesn't mean robotic. It doesn't mean take away Nigel's personality and put in Jesus' personality. It means, mm -hmm. it means Nigel, fully operating in the spirit, is Christ-like. And, that, and, and yeah. so that's, that's kind of how that process works. Uh, and it's it's all through surrender and it's work of the spirit. So sanctify, set me aside, mm -hmm. set them aside for the work of the master, um, and in that being being purified, being being uh, crafted into the image of Christ to be used for His purpose. And then specifically says, uh, in truth, your word is truth. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot you can talk about going into that. We looked at Romans 12:2, uh, which is not to be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds, so we can test and approve what God's will is, his good, perfect, and pleasing will. And that comes from saturating ourselves in yeah. God's Not word. Not just splashing our face Not just with splashing God's, our face. God's Ooh, word. Just but enough for today. Absolutely being drenched so in that. That was such a good image of, you know, it's... It's not enough to just know a little bit, have it a little drizzle on our face, yeah. but to really get doused with it. Yeah, yeah, really. yeah because it's got to get into every every nook and cranny of our of our hearts. Yeah, you know where we battle against mm -hmm. the flesh, yeah. so that it it begins to to make that change. And it's and and I, we can't stress enough how that's not a it's not a work of willpower. Yeah, it's it's a work of the spirit. Our role is to kill the flesh, mm -hmm. surrender, 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 which is much harder than it sounds, you know. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, sanctified in the truth. That's the image that we get right there. Set them aside. Um, if we're going to be unified in purpose and we're going to do what he's calling us mm -hmm. to do, we've got to have that same mind. We've got to think the same way, yeah. meaning we need to, uh, we need to, our, our, uh, our will needs to be conformed to the Father's. Yeah. There's a reality. God is the reality. He's the truth. He sets our path. And he's how we base everything off of it. Exactly. So, prayer for unity, prayer that we would be sanctified in the truth. Mm -hmm. Now, something that you said, uh, stepped on some toes. Uh, yeah, I'm in a my toe group. stepper. Yeah, it was like, ooh, wow, that one hurt. <laughs> that one hurt. So you <laughs> said something along the lines of, we, we, the point isn't to be praying to get out of circumstances. Oh, yeah, yeah. We should be praying... That God gets us through circumstances. Yeah. And we were like, oh, ah, no, don't say that. <laughs> that, that one hurts. That one was, that one, it just cut to the core for so many people in, in our group as we were talking about yeah. Sunday night. And so talk to us a little bit about where that was coming from, what you were thinking with that. And let's get into this conversation about how he, he's promised, he's asking the Father to protect mm -hmm. the disciples in this case from the evil one. Right, yeah, verse 15, yeah. Yeah, so we, you know, oftentimes we we think, okay, the the pinnacle of what I can pray, the greatest thing I can pray for, the best thing for me would be me not to have to go through this thing, this mm -hmm. hard thing, whatever it would be. Mm -hmm. And we bring to the Lord and we're like, okay, I know that it's best for me not to be having to deal with this, and I know you know that too, Lord. So in your will i'm going to ask for that it's in our will that we ask for that and we and we so many times now it's not always not god's will for us to endure 
through a specific trial. Sometimes sure, it doesn't want to take It's not it's always out. not in his will for us to pray for those things correct, that get out. Correct. Seems like David seems or David has several psalms that are yeah. doing that. But if we're being honest with ourselves, yeah, most not of a lot times, of us are David out there running around. Do like <laughs> most of the time, the vast majority of yeah. the time, we are we are approaching a trial or a problem uh, or a season that we see coming or in the midst of, and and we automatically think the best thing for me, and therefore the best thing for the kingdom, which means it's obviously God's will right. is that I don't have to suffer through this thing that is uncomfortable. And yeah. the ultimate good is me being comfortable and happy. Yeah. The order there was me, me. kingdom, God. <laughs> right. And that's not, not the way you want to go. Right. So Flip what is it? Around. What What's the higher way to go with that? Yeah. Yeah. So in every trial that we come to or uh, whatever it is, I mean, a difficult season, like I said, whatever it is we come to, Rather than automatically making the default, this is bad, this isn't what God wants, and I need out, we need to make the default, even in our prayers, like before we pray, Mm -hmm. sometimes we need to go, what am I praying for, Lord? Like, you tell me what to pray Mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. So even before we approach it with this, clearly I need to get out of this, is, God, what do you want? What are you doing in this situation? What is your work? Uh, It's it's the same analogy we, we use about uh, heating up the silver to remove the dross. Yeah. You know, the silver doesn't go, I don't want to be hot. This is the wrong thing for me. No way am I supposed to be hot. How do I get out of this being hot thing? The silver, which is what yeah. belongs there, the silver, which is, is, is what is being purified, mm-hmm. is, is not bothered by the heat. It's only the dross, the, the stuff that doesn't belong that's bothered by the heat. Yeah. And so... When, when our initial response is, no, 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 this is bad. I don't like any of this and I don't want any of this. We need to back up and go, is God still sovereign? Yes, he is. Is he still in control? Absolutely. Does he know where I am? Yes. Is he with me in it? Of course he is. Now, Lord, here we are, this thing in front of me. How do you want me to go through that? Let's go together. Get me through this. Let's work through this so that the dross can be heated up and removed. Yeah. And there's times when, when God says, yeah, that's not the trial that I want for you. I want you to depend on me, and I'm going to move you out of that and put you here. Other times, and I would say most of the time, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all the time when we're walking in the Spirit, but most of the time when we get to those, he's got to work in it. He's got something that he wants to do in us right. through right. that. Uh, and so we, instead of saying, get me out of here, get me out of here, mm-hmm. we grab onto him all that tighter and say, Mm -hmm. let's get through this. How do you want me to uh, bring me through this with you rather than... It's a huge difference. It's It's a a huge huge difference. difference. It's a total difference. And at the core of the difference between the two is, and this comes up in joy as well, is our default is my circumstances determine my happiness, my protection, my connection with God is, oh, hey, I just got a promotion at work, or I just got... God must love me now. You know, she said yes, and and she's going to go on a date with me, and that tells me that God loves me. And then she broke up with me. Well, does God love me now? (laughs) Clearly not. God doesn't love me anymore. (laughs) Like, this was going well. I I totally botched the date, and I was an idiot, and I was a jerk. But it's God's fault, and he doesn't love me. (laughs) That couldn't be why... Do you have like some deep seated thing we need to do talk I? about here? Like, I do, but we're gonna get off. The, we're gonna get off the camera. Next for that video, one. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be sitting in the the counselor chair here, uh, or lying on the couch, yeah, on maybe. The couch, yeah. um, so, Amy and I are fine. Everything's, Everything's fine. Everything's good. Um, they're deep seated. No, the the whole point. Getting back to what I was getting at is, uh, circumstances don't determine. Your worth, God. don't determine how well you're doing, don't determine God's love. Yep. Yep. You know, so therefore, many times they, it's therefore like, they don't determine our joy. They don't they don't determine those are the things our joy is is ba- uh, bound to and standing. Absolutely, for. absolutely. I, I think the easy thing to look at this is protection from the evil one. Great. That's awesome. They're not gonna die, they're not gonna get sick, they're not that's the easy way to go. Right, and it's yeah. like, wait, wait, wait. He just said they're going to be kicked out of the synagogue. He just said Mm -hmm. that people are going to think that they're doing God's will when they kill you, right? Which all the disciples, minus John, are going to be martyred. That's what we know from the history book. Right, and so you could be like, wait, God didn't answer the prayer. Oh, no, this isn't the truth. You know, that's not the way to go. Mm -hmm. 
the promise here is for the higher things, not the earthly things, right? This protection that this is talking about, protection from the evil one, allows us to be faithful, allows us to see the truth, to see eternal things. And in those eternal things, we have an identity that's now in Christ. Mm -hmm. And that, that identity is set. It can't be touched. No one can take him from my Father's hands. Right. We are set. And so given that fact, our identity is, is totally set in place. And it's protected. And that sets the foundation for everything. So in any situation, you can be joyful. Because the deepest part of you, whatever the circumstance... The deepest part of you is assured to be with God currently and in the future forever. And that's where your joy comes from. Yeah, forever. Like, forever. For, <laughs> forever. And it cannot right? be taken. Yes. And that doesn't mean joy. And we talk about joy a lot too. And, and we're going to keep doing that. I mean, it, it needs to sink in. Uh, it doesn't mean that joy, we were talking about this right before we started filming. Joy and grief, or joy and sorrow, mm -hmm. they, they, they are compatible. You can, you can stand on the foundation of joy, yeah. knowing what is true, knowing your worth, knowing your value to the Lord, knowing your eternal destiny, knowing nothing can be stolen, none of that can be stolen from you, knowing you're secure, yeah. and still look at a situation you're in and be, say, this is sorrowful. I mean, look at Jesus and Lazarus. Yeah, yeah. Jesus wept. Like 10 minutes before he raised him from the grave. He knew what yes. was coming. Yes. Yes. He wasn't like, hey guys, this ain't no big deal. Like, yeah. watch what I'm about to do. He, he yeah. felt that emotion. He didn't lose his joy. Yeah. But in that joy, he experienced mm -hmm. grief, if not for himself, for those around him, because knowing even what's coming. Yeah. So joy and grief, joy and sorrow, they're compatible. Yeah. You can have a level of experience and emotions here that are authentic and true and right. And, and unsinful. And unsinful, totally. right? You, you can feel bad. You can feel sorrowful. You can cry and, and, and all of those things. And yet at the same time, you can be joyful. Yeah, it's true. And you don't have to look to what's happening in this world to say, can I be happy? Can I be joyful? That's not where our joy comes from. No. And on top of that, it's not, <clears throat> it's not all about us either. In the first place. It's not at all about us. <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of love that, yeah. that Jesus has given to us in this. That's awesome. But at the end of the day, we are servants who are mm -hmm. serving him. And so if he has us go through a circumstance for his glory, for his purposes, yep. that's what we're called to do. And oftentimes, that also includes us becoming better people. Our character becomes more like him. We become sanctified. We become holy. We become more like Him through going through the fire. And then, and and by that, we're able to be used of Him in yes. in more ways. Yes. It doesn't make Him love us more. It's not that kind of oh, your value is increased now. It's not that. But the more we die to ourselves, the more that we're sanctified in the truth, the more that we are become Christ-like, the stronger our faith becomes. Mm -hmm. The more we are able to be used for the things that He wants to use us for. Yeah, I think yes. back when you yes. first became a believer. Mm -hmm. Are you still like the things that were most challenging for you when you were a believer when you became a first became a believer? Are they still the most challenging things for you? Because that's a problem. <laughs> that's a big problem. I think yeah. about when I first became a believer and and the things that God was asking me to do, and I'm like, I've got to depend on him fully to do this one thing, and it's the biggest <laughs> thing ever. Now it's I don't even remember what they are. It's like yeah. you do those before breakfast. Not even realizing that you you did that. They've just become natural. It yeah. just becomes natural. <laughs> yep. Just like a child doesn't, you know, my daughter gets the milk out of the, out of the refrigerator and she's got to use both hands and she carries it like this, you know. This my, is Lily. Yeah, this is Lily, right. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, Lily doesn't do that. You know? <laughs> Lily just picks it up. Lily and, you just know, picks it up. If, if she were still, you know, if you're, you're 13 years old and you're still doing that, there's a, there's a problem here. And we're it, not doing this right. Something went wrong. Exactly. Right. It's the same with our faith, you know, yeah. as we, as we grow in our faith yeah. in, in all those things, we're able to be used of the father in New ways. Absolutely. So it's really, that's a big deal. Absolutely. Do you have anything else to close us out? Mm, I think we covered everything we can cover there's in this passage. So there's <laughs> nothing left on the table. Yeah, there's, and so right. given that there's nothing left on the table. Covered it completely. That our pea brains can figure <laughs> out. That might be true for me. Yeah. Then yeah. 
that's our that's our time for today. Thanks so much for listening in. We appreciate you guys. We love you. And we pray that God would give you unity, joy, that he would protect you from the evil one, and that he would sanctify you in his truth. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs>